Let me begin by saying that uh, we will not stand for these cuts to health and human services. Oh, wrong year. Sorry. Uh, wrong <laughs> you know, uh, another ho hum balanced budget in California. What can I say? It's. Uh, it, 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 we were talking about it today and contrasting uh, today's announcement with uh, prior announcements. And certainly, I think both Senator Leno and I and our colleagues come out uh, to the cameras here and before you with, uh, with some relief and much more of a smile uh, on our faces. Uh, we've been through, as you know, uh, the hardest of hard times in California. We started with a $42 billion deficit. You've heard, you've heard us talk about that. And now Governor Brown presents today a balanced budget. And he's right when he says fiscal discipline is not the enemy of democratic governance. I would add a little addendum to that, which is physical dis fiscal discipline is not the enemy of governance by California Democrats either. Because we have, uh, we are in this position in part because together we stepped up and made the difficult decisions. In terms of the budget the governor presented an hour or so ago, whatever differences we may have, they are small differences by degree. The governor's frame is solid. He talked about really the three principles that we have been talking about, namely the need to put money eventually into a rainy day, to pay down the wall of debt, and he made a good start on reinvesting or suggesting that we reinvest in education and higher education. I would only add that we cannot forget and won't forget mental health, dental care, and subsistence for the elderly and disabled and, and, and other related issues as the year progresses. And there may be an opportunity through the implementation of the Affordable Care Act to address these kinds of issues. This is the beginning of an era where we have a real ability, without the heavy weight of exhausting budget deficits, to focus on big policy changes. The way we finance public education, and the governor's put out an interesting proposal, which is uh, which I think is sound in principle and worthy of a lot of detailed discussion. The way we deliver higher education, including online education. Last year, the governor signed my two bills, which required that the 50 most popular courses produce textbooks in an online format for free for students. And we need to continue with that kind of innovation. Obviously, health access for all very pleased to see the governor embrace Medicaid expansion. But health access for all that is premised on early intervention and prevention. And finally, changing government to be both a tough regulator where appropriate and where necessary, while getting out of the way of the private sector and job creation where its involvement is not needed. And so let us focus on a number of things this year that we have not had the ability to focus on because the California budget is in balance. It's a good day. Senator Leno. Sure. I'll pick up where the pro tem left off, that we do have a bit of a breathing room this year. Clearly, we don't have to make the painful cuts, deep cuts that we've made in recent years. That's been done. The passage of Prop 30 really just refills that $6 billion hole that Arnold Schwarzenegger dug when he rescinded the restoration of the vehicle license fee. So it just brings us up to ground level, but no more. But as the economy continues to revive and the benefits of 30 continue to grow, we will have surpluses as already projected in the governor's budget in the years to come. So we're in this little middle ground area, no more cuts, but not sufficient monies to make restorations. Our goal here, of course, is to reinvest in the reduced public infrastructures that have occurred over recent years. But while we're in this calm couple of years, a perfect time to begin, as the pro tem said, looking at some of the bigger policy issues. For example, all of the tax credits that have been put in place over the past many years. Good time for conversation. Governor was asked what he thought in line with his whole philosophy of 
bringing decision making closer to the people and to those who are being impacted by the decisions with regard to the constitutional amendments, for example, reducing the threshold, whether we're talking about passage at local levels of school parcel taxes or for parcel taxes or bonds for parks or for transportation or for libraries. That whole conversation we've not really had since 1978, short of the 2000 ballot measure, which lowered the threshold for school bonds. So it is a real breath of fresh air right now. And I want to credit Pro Tem's leadership in working with the governor in the passage of Prop 30. Everyone suggested it had no chance of passing by 10 percentage points. And I would venture to say that the passage of Prop 30 and by 10 percentage points is probably the most dramatic ballot decision voters have made since the passage of Prop 13 in 1978. We have turned a corner. Taxpayers want to reinvest in state infrastructure, in public structures that sustain their lives, and that's where we are right now. So it's, it's a good day for California's budget.